I have with me a special guest joining on Beyond World is One, author and journalist Tavleen Singh. Tavleen Singh, that we heard uh, Chidambaram talking about or uh, describing it as a monumental blunder or cardinal sin, which might have catastrophic consequences for the people of Jammu and Kashmir and outside of it. Your thoughts on uh, the opposition's point of view on this rather contentious issue? All right. For a start, I would like to challenge Mr. Chidambaram on his description of <clears throat> the demolition of democracy that he thinks is about to happen. Has he forgotten that not once in all the years that Congress ruled... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm pressing my throat. When were there free elections in Kashmir? The, uh, the first free election that was allowed between 1952, I think, and 1970... Uh, was in 1977. Uh, Kashmir was denied democracy under Congress governments, under Congress prime ministers. What we are paying for in Kashmir is mistakes made by many Congress prime ministers, and they should be ashamed. And, you know, when he talks about monumental blunder, where was he when Indira Gandhi, in 1983, dismissed the government of Farooq Abdullah, 1984, sorry, making it clear that Kashmir would never have democracy. At that point, the historical problem didn't exist. There was a new problem that got created in 84 because of that mistake. That's what we're paying for now. So, you know, monumental blunder and, you know, we've lived in this period of great democracy. That's nonsense. Indeed, That's my first opinion. Indeed. And, and keeping the opposition rhetoric aside, Ms. Singh, for a moment, if I were to ask you to take a step back and reflect on the events of this morning in particular, since you refer to mistakes committed in the past, especially by successive Congress governments, would you describe what happened this morning as a clean break from the past in terms of the policies pursued by the Nehru, the so-called Nehru Gandhi dynasty? And this is the Naya Bharat that Prime Minister Modi keeps talking about? Uh, well, I wouldn't really like to say that this is a great new step forward because um which is very worrying. I tweeted uh, on a comment on a tweet that Ram Madhav uh, made this morning about Ram Madhav being the BJP General Secretary on, on what had happened and he said this is a glorious day. And I just made a small comment saying, you know, it could be a new beginning, but it could be the beginning of, it, of the end. And on that, I have been abused and told to go to Pakistan and, you know, how I'm, I'm I mean, I don't even, I can't even get into the kind of abuse that I've had on, tw on Twitter today. And if that can happen to me as a Sikh, you know, I dread to think what is going to happen to Muslims who dare to get up and say this was the only Muslim state and you might change its whole character in a time of lynchings, etc. So, you know, to tell you the truth, I think it could be a good step to finally stop, you know, the secessionist movements in Kashmir that we haven't been able to deal with. And it could be a good move to keep Pakistan, to remind Pakistan to stay out of Kashmir, that it's never going to break away from India. But on the other hand, what the Prime Minister and the Home Minister need to do is to try and control their own over-enthusiastic supporters who are making it sound like some kind of great Hindu victory. And that, I think, is very worrying. But, Ms. Singh, just to take off the point where you left, how would you, in your personal estimation, if I were to ask you to do it, sell this idea to the skeptics at home and abroad? What would be your unique selling point to wean those skeptics away from their uh, point of view to yours or the government for that matter? Well, for a start, sell it to the Kashmiris. I think the most important thing you need to do is to convince the ordinary Kashmiris that what has happened is going to be better for them. Now, you know, I've just been in Kashmir two months ago. And they were tired, they were sick to death of the violence, which has gone on too long. The insurgency has gone on too long. And I kept meeting, I felt, you know, it was heartbreaking the number of young men I met who just wanted to get a job and get on with their lives. Now, if after this, 
the government actually manages to make a huge economic difference, to make you know the Kashmir Valley into the Switzerland of of Asia, you know, well then that would be great. Maybe they'll sort of forget the wounds of the past. But there are deep wounds that have been created in the past 20 years, and the, before selling it to you know other people as, and you know talking about USP and buzzwords of that kind, just sell it to the Kashmiris. And also, uh, Ms. Singh, since you are a keen watcher of South Asian politics and foreign affairs, how do you think this this morning's developments will play itself? Uh, uh, in abroad especially in terms of uh, countries such as Pakistan in particular, given the fact that they've always had a particular point of view on this issue and they've already issued many statements uh, since this morning. So how will this play out diplomatically on the world stage? Uh, well, we, we'll have to walk a very thin line, I imagine, with Pakistan. But I think that w before doing this, if we had actually initiated a process of dialogue. I don't know how it could have been done because all the processes in the past have been pretty futile. But to convince Kashmiris and Pakistan that we're never going to be able to give up Kashmir, which is what I think that the Pakistanis have also accepted. But I think that what precipitated what has happened was Imran Khan going to Washington, and sitting with Trump and, and, you know, talking about mediation, because that is unacceptable to the most moderate Indian. The idea of an American president mediating between India and one of its own provinces is out of the question. So I think that, you know, maybe we should begin a process now of dialogue with Pakistan and say this is the reality, get used to it, and let's get on with it. And Ms. Singh, if I were to come back to a point which you made uh, just moments before, you spoke about the mistakes committed in the past by successive Congress governments. And yet, paradoxically, you say that the government of the day, the, the BJP-led NDA government and its supporters should uh, you know, refrain from triumphalism. Now, they would turn back and, and, and tell you that you know, it's taken 70 years for this country to do what it did this morning. So why blame the government of the day for the sins of the past, as it were? Uh, I, I'm not blaming the government of the day for the sins of the past. I think that actually Modi had a real chance in 2014 when just after the big floods in Sirinagar, he went up there and promised that big aid package. And, you know, Kashmir was ready for a new kind of, of leadership in Delhi. He could have started with a clean slate. They gave Atal Bihari Vajpayee a chance and Vajpayee managed to bring a measure of peace in the valley. Unfortunately, Modi did not deliver on that promise of uh, aid after the floods. And, and then Burhan Vani got killed and, you know, you had an explosion, and they, which they haven't been able to control. So, you know, personally, I think this is something that should have been done, but I wish that it, they'd done it by getting the Kashmiris on their side. There was a real chance to do that. All right, Ms. Singh, do stay on. I want to focus on uh, the developing story for the benefit of our viewers here on Beyond World is One. Now, in the biggest decision on Jammu and Kashmir in independent India, Home Minister of the country, Amit Shah, made his much-anticipated announcement in Parliament this morning. Now, through a notification issued by the President of India, Article 370, which provides special status for the state of Jammu and Kashmir, and Article 35A, which empowers the legislature of Jammu and Kashmir to define its permanent residence, have been revoked. Now, the presidential order issued through the notification is called the Constitution Application to Jammu and Kashmir Order 2019 and will come into force with immediate effect. Now, with this, all provisions of the Indian Constitution, as amended from time to time, will apply to Jammu and Kashmir. संविधान के अनुच्छेद 373 के अंतर्गत भारत के संविधान के अनुच्छेद 370 के खंड 1 के साथ पठित अनुच्छेद 370 के खंड 3 द्वारा प्रदत्त शक्तियों का प्रयोग करते हुए राष्ट्रपति संसद की सिफारिश पर यह घोषणा करते हैं कि यह दिनांक जिस दिन भारत के राष्ट्रपति द्वारा इस घोषणा पर हस्ताक्षर किए जाएंगे और इस सरकारी इसको इसे सरकारी गैजेट में प्रकाशित किया जाएगा उस दिन से 
अनुच्छेद तीन के सभी खंड लागू नहीं होंगे सिवाय खंड एक के नामक अनुसार पड़ा जाएगा Now besides this Amit Shah has also mooted to bifurcate the state of Jammu and Kashmir into the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and the union territory of Ladakh as per the notification the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir will have a legislature while the union territory of Ladakh will be centrally administered now stating that article 370 had been a hindrance in the integration of the people of Jammu and Kashmir to India Home Minister Amit Shah stated that under the prime ministership of Mr Narendra Modi the government had taken this bold step for the better administration of the state Is janna chahte hain sabhi mahodal sabse zyada sabse zyada paisa Kashmir ke andar gaya phir bhi Kashmir ka log aaj bhi kyu hai wo de janna main aap ke madhyam se अपील करता हूं विपक्ष के सभी सभा सदस्यों को कृपया चर्चा करिए आप आपके तर्क में बेखौफ रख सकते हैं शौक से रख सकते हैं मैं हर एक तर्क का जवाब दूंगा और मैं दृढ़ मान्यता के साथ आया हूं कि धारा तीन हटाने में एक सेकंड भी देरी नहीं करनी चाहिए The Rajya Sabha immediately erupted in protest two PDP legislators who tore up the Indian constitution on the floor of the house were immediately removed the notification will now be discussed on the floor of both houses of the Indian parliament and needs to be ratified by both houses as well and i still have my guest tavleen singh with me live from new delhi with singh uh, just to come back to the point you were making in our uh, in your earlier intervention now what how would you respond to those who turn around and tell you that look there are benefits to be reaped from this uh, departure from the past in terms of uh, creating jobs for the youth in jammu and kashmir money has been pumped in over over years over several decades and yet there is nothing by way of infrastructure development to be seen in the valley or outside there is no private sector participation there is no fdi coming to jammu and kashmir the article was discriminatory against women of the state who if they married outside the state would lose their their uh, special privileges and rights so there are benefits also to be accrued from this uh, development so how would you respond to this submission of theirs um there are benefits possible if the kind of corruption that the political that the local political parties indulged in over a period of time in kashmir is stopped if you have a clean administration that genuinely makes an effort to bring development to create jobs to actually turn kashmir which is one of the most beautiful places in the world into an indian version or an asian version of switzerland then you know i think that people will forget the wounds as i said before but on the other hand please remember that there isn't the kind of dire poverty in kashmir that you see in parts of up and bihar kashmiris are mostly middle class they're not desperately poor so you know the, the you have to actually take them along with you and you know make it worthwhile at the moment they're not with you as far as i can see all right and uh, looking at the developments of this morning you know reflect on the developments rather missing i'm sure you'll agree with me when i say that you know there are many implications ramifications repercussions of this uh, development in terms of legality in terms of uh, politics in terms of diplomacy and also in terms of security now given the fact that troops are being rushed into jnk as we speak do you anticipate further an uptick in violence given the fact of what happened this morning or do you think uh, the government has made adequate measures to anticipate trouble going uh, you know going ahead uh, you cannot keep uh, angry people locked up in their homes for a, you know for for longer than the sh- i mean you can only do it for a very short time 
Now, I'm not sure what the implications are when they say that it'll be ruled from Delhi. Does that mean that the Kashmiri police will be disbanded, that you will have policemen going from central forces? We don't know the implications of all that because it hasn't been explained. But as I said to you, the most important thing is to bring the Kashmiri people on board. And I'm not sure how that's going to happen. I mean, I would really like to know how this process of winning the hearts and minds of the Kashmiri people is going to take place. If that happens, then nothing better could be. I mean, the, the removal of the, this article could be the best thing that's happened to Kashmir ever. All right, so as Ms. Tavleen Singh says, the battle to win the hearts and minds of the people of Jammu and Kashmir is a work in progress, and uh, we'll keep you posted as we go forward on the developments of uh, this issue and related issues. Uh, if I can take a moment to talk about the uh, related issues to this particular development, after the historic decision by the Indian government to abrogate Articles 370 and 35A, now there are reports coming in of a massive deployment of troops in Jammu and Kashmir. Close to 8,000 paramilitary troops have been airlifted from Uttar Pradesh, Odisha, Assam and other parts of the country into the Kashmir Valley. Reports indicate that the troop induction is still underway, which means that more troops will be deployed very soon. This is, of course, in addition to the 35,000 paramilitary forces already stationed in the Kashmir Valley since last month. Now, the Indian Army and the Air Force have also been put on high alert by the government of India. The move comes after the central government's decision to abrogate Articles 370 and 35A and to bifurcate the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. This has, of course, triggered vehement opposition from leaders across Jammu and Kashmir. The government also seems to be expecting a lot of backlash from the residents and this latest troop movement is reportedly aimed at maintaining stability and peace in the Kashmir Valley. The Ministry of Home Affairs has also issued an order. The chief secretaries and director generals of all states and union territories advising law enforcement to be in on high alert. Right, if I can go back to my guest, Ms. Tavleen Singh, who is joining us live from Delhi. Ms. Singh, let's, let's talk a bit about the international reactions coming in now. I'm given to understand that New Delhi will soon deploy all its uh, missions, embassies and high commissions abroad to preempt any adverse international reaction in the hours or days ahead. Uh, given, the, given your experience of dealing with such matters in the past, do you think we are adequately prepared to handle what might come New Delhi's way? Uh, I certainly hope so. We haven't done very well in the past. If we were doing well enough, then we would not have had a situation where the American president would offer to mediate. We would not have a situation where uh, major television networks like the BBC continue to talk about a Kashmir administered by India and uh, you know another Kashmir administered by Pakistan. So we haven't actually managed to make our case very well so far. I hope we can do better now. All right, on that note, Ms. Tavleen Singh, thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights into this developing story here on World Beyond World is One. Appreciate it. And with that, it's a wrap of this bulletin. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.